The Honourable Member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've been up in this House numerous times pushing for the government to secure a fair deal on softwood lumber, urging them to protect the good-paying forestry jobs that tens of thousands of Canadians rely upon. We have debated this issue in this place several times, and I have repeatedly urged the government to take all necessary steps to prevent a trade war with the United States over softwood lumber exports. It's imperative that Canada secures a fair deal with the United States, a deal that respects our regional differences and protects high-quality Canadian forestry jobs. However, a year later, Mr. Speaker, in fact, two years later, the Canadian government continues to fail in their ability to get a deal. And now today, the U.S. Department of Commerce has announced its final decision with massive unfair anti-dumping and countervailing duties reaching as high as 27 percent. These tariffs and our government's inability to secure a trade deal has led and will continue to lead to devastating job losses and damage to this vital Canadian industry. A report released by the Conference Board of Canada at the end of May 2017 stated that U.S. softwood lumber duties will result in the loss of 2,200 jobs and a 700 million reduction in Canadian exports over the next two years. Softwood lumber is a vibrant part of Canada's forestry sector. For many rural communities, it's the backbone of their economies. According to Canada's Labour Force Survey, in 2015, the forestry industry accounted for 300,000 direct and indirect jobs. The Canada-U.S. softwood lumber dispute first began back in 1982, and for 35 years, the American industry has argued that Canadian producers benefit from subsidization, a claim, Mr. Speaker, that's been defeated time and time again in trade tribunals. Over the years, there have been several managed trade agreements but upon their expiration, Canadian exports have seen more duties applied and Canada has spent approximately $100 million on legal fees to defend our position. Mr. Speaker, as we know, the 2006 agreement was renewed in 2012 and expired last October. Again, after the Liberal government failed to negotiate a new agreement, it seemed to be spending more time denying their own responsibilities and blaming the previous Conservative government than they did ensuring workers in the forestry sector had the job security that they so desperately needed. Like the huge hit lumber companies took in 2006 due to these tariffs, again, our industry is reeling, and it's the forestry workers who will suffer the most. After years of being unable to negotiate a fair deal, Canadians are left feeling unsure and, quite frankly, abandoned by this government. And there seems still to be no path forward. After the last agreement expired, the government waited two months before introducing a compensation package, with the, which the NDP welcomed, Mr. Speaker, but I must point out that it contained nothing to improve EI benefits for workers who lost their jobs because of this dispute. The $867 million support package was a good short-term measure for the industry and forestry companies. However, Canadian forestry workers need long-term solutions. Canadians deserve answers from this government, Mr. Speaker, not more empty promises and hollow words and talks about a good deal, not just any deal, because we quite frankly can't be sitting here two years from now with no deal still in place. We need a deal to protect these workers, to protect the communities that they represent and that they quite honestly provide an, an economic benefit for. And my question is, how long will these middle-class Canadians have to wait for the government to fight for them? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. Well, let me assure you that our government is seized with this issue and we are, understand that the, the impact that this is having on the individuals, the communities, the provinces that have been impacted by the uh, end of this deal, which, which unfortunately has, has uh, resulted in some of the actions of, of our trading partner. We are committed to getting a deal, but that does not mean a quick deal. It means the right deal, and we will continue to fight and defend Canada's interests. On the issue of responding, uh, the member opposite raised the issue of our response as it relates to EI in her question during question period and raised it uh, tangentially uh, in, in her address here tonight. And I welcome to address this issue. This government is sensitive to the ongoing situation. The EI program is designed to respond to economic changes such as the one we're experiencing. And flexibility, flexibility is built into the program to allow us to respond to deteriorating situations in particular sectors and particular economies as they emerge on a region-by-region -region basis. When a region unemployment rate rises, 
the entrance requirement is reduced and the duration of benefits increases as it has in many of these communities. EI is there for unemployed Canadians when they need help the most and our government is backing that process and making sure that Service Canada and a full of government approach is at work working directly with individuals, communities, mayors and provincial governments to make sure that we provide the appropriate support, training and transition supports uh, for, for the interim as we move towards a full-time job. Last year we also made a number of other changes to improve the EI program so that it's more accessible generally across the country and in particular in areas that are facing this sort of distress. For example, we reduced the two-week waiting period to one week. This measure eases the financial pressure on families waiting for benefits to arrive and for workers who are expecting their benefits to be delivered quickly, even though they're being unemployed through no fault of their own. We also implemented a new, more flexible working while on claim pilot project. As some of these industries get short-term contracts and people return to work in the interim for short periods of time, we don't that interrupt their benefits and their, their eligibility for benefits, and so we create, created more flexibility to accommodate that situation to make sure affected areas are given the most sympathetic and understanding approach to how benefits are modeled uh, and model them after the, ex the experiences that they are directly uh, un uh, involved in and engaged to right now. In fact, on June 1, 2017, the government also announced $867 million extra to invest and support forestry industry workers and their communities that have been infected, uh, affected by the U.S. measures that have targeted our software, uh, softwood lumber industry. This includes close to $90 million to mitigate layoffs, support workforce adjustment to help affected workers transition to new opportunities in the short term so that they can sustain their presence in those communities and re-engage with the industry in the long term. We'll be temporarily extending the maximum duration of work sharing agreements from 38 to 78, from 38 to 76 weeks. And this is again in order to help those communities sustain a critical mass of workers in the industry with flexibility so they can continue to receive benefits and share work if possible uh, to, to retain other benefits uh, with, with skilled workers in that sector. The work sharing program is designed to help employers and employees when there is a temporary reduction in the level of business activity. It supplements the income of EI eligible workers who agree to work reduced hours temporarily. But we've also taken additional steps including providing $50 million over two years to, affect, to, to affected provinces through amending labour market development agreements. And this will help displaced workers in the forestry sector with the training and employment supports that they need to transition to new jobs temporarily, again to sustain the workforce in the communities, to sustain the communities and to make sure that those impacted have, have, have the presence of the Canadian government and programs there to sustain the practice, sustain the industry, but also sustain the quality of life and the social fabric of communities that have been impacted. Service Canada is now implementing this National Action Plan for Softwood Lumber to respond to the needs of workers affected by this labour dispute. And as I said at the beginning, our government is committed to getting a good deal, a strong deal, and what we hope is that deal delivers the certainty and the stability uh, that previous deals have to, to Softwood Lumber. It's a critical part of our community communities across the country, a critical part of our country, and workers should not feel abandoned because this government... The Honourable Member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, you know, it's ironic that we're here on the exact same day that these duties have been made permanent by the U.S. Uh, at the time that the government introduced this package of programs and money, it was viewed to be a temporary fix. And, Mr. Speaker, there will not be enough money or these programs will not extend long enough to sustain the job losses that will be seen in these communities. There needs to be a new package going forward to address the very serious issues that are now going to be faced on a permanent basis. I understand, Mr. Speaker, uh, that the government will, of course, pursue this legally. Uh, it has cost us a great deal of money to do so in the past, will cost us a great deal once again, and will take a great deal of time. In the meantime, Canadian families, forestry workers and communities are left wondering what the government will now bring forward. So I wonder if the member opposite can now speak to where we go from today and what packages will... The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, the issues that the member opposite has raised are, are perhaps best dealt with with the Trade Minister or the Ministers engaged with negotiations uh, with the United States. The issue that I was brought to the House on related to a question she asked earlier in the question period uh, re regarding EI benefits and our approach to making sure workers are supported. The member has asked, is this government committed to getting a good deal? Yes. Is this government continue to negotiate? Absolutely. The characterization of the changes as being permanent and lasting forever, this is, I can't even count the number of times we've, we've, we've encountered this situation where a deal expires, uh, punishing uh, duties are imposed, 
trade organizations knock down those, those, those measures as being unnecessarily punitive and ill-founded, and we move back towards a, 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 a civil and, and an appropriate conversation with our American trading partners to make sure that, that, that workers on both sides of the, of the border are supported, the industry is supported on both sides of the market, and trade is managed in a responsible way. Those remain the goals of this, of, of this government. Those remain the goals of, of, of the individuals of our government seized to that. If the member would like to discuss more EI situations as they develop, we'll be happy to respond. The Honourable Member for